everyone, it's Puneet once again uh, with another design tutorial in Adobe XD and today we'll check out these cool uh, drop down hover animations that I've made in Adobe XD without using any other software. In the comments below, let me know which one is your favorite, number one, number two or number three. Go ahead in the comments right now. I have a quick announcement to make. I've started uh, my own Telegram channel or Telegram group. Now for the first one, I'll just make this a uh, random artboard and I will place a rectangle right here. Uh, this rectangle, I will make sure that the border radius is about 50. I'll make sure that the rectangle's border radius is about 20. Perfect. And uh, I'll make this this uh, turquoise green or very light teal green, if you may. Perfect. And I'll also give this a shadow of uh, 12 by 0. You got it. And um, pick the color up from here and make sure that it's a slightly darker version of this. So now this gives it a slightly a three dimensional button kind of effect. Next thing I need to do is create the actual list, which will be list item one. And there, there you go, your first list item. Make this slightly bigger as well, maybe in proportion with the actual text right here. And I'll just copy these make sure that the second one is actually named list item two and the third one is named list item three perfect now the next thing that i will do is create another rectangle over this and uh, give it a similar color as this rectangle over here remove the border and make sure it covers a good amount of area on top as well perfect uh, and also make sure that it is behind these list items, but above the button. The button is actually rectangle 11, so it's above the button. Now for the last step, we will create a circle and uh, we'll, give it a, we'll give it the same color as this background. Now, once I've created this circle, I'll give it uh, this color, which is actually slightly a darker variant of this teal right here and I'll place it closer to this chevron arrow right here. Once this is done, I'll go to the blend mode dropdown and click on color. It'll ensure that it only colors the dropdown and it doesn't color the white portion outside the dropdown. Perfect. And I'll reduce the opacity to 0%, of course. Now that everything is set up, what I'm gonna do is select everything on screen here and say Command K or Control K to make it a component. And as you can see, now it's named this component 8-1. Now place it in somewhat in the center right here. So this is the default state. And uh, in the default state, what we will do is we will reduce the height of this rectangle on top so that it only covers up to the base rectangle here. And I will also move all three list items to uh, the bottom of this rectangle and also ensure that it's behind everything else. Make sure the list item 3 cannot be viewed from here. Perfect. Now that we have everything aligned and ready, what I'll do is I'll click on this plus icon right next to default state and I'll say add state. Click on hover state right here and it'll automatically create a hover state for you. I'll click on enter and that's it. So in the hover state, while the hover state is selected, the first step I'll do is to actually click on this uh, click on this little icon and sh hold shift and just rotate it just like this so that it indicates that the drop down has been opened. And for this drop down, we'll do something different. We'll move it, we'll double click on this rectangle and the text and this little arrow key, which is uh, the path here and I'll basically drag this down a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit, so that it moves down a little bit. Now, the second step I'll do is to increase the height of the rectangle on top like this. And while we're at it, I will select the ellipse, which is right here, and I will expand it. While we're at it, I will increase the opacity to 100% uh, of this ellipse and just keep on expanding it until we get the entire area of the dropdown. Now that the entire area of the dropdown has been covered, I'll make sure that the list items actually uh, float to the top, uh, just as so. 
and we still can't really see them but if I bring them to the top you can actually see them make sure that the list items are evenly placed as we originally had and just like that hmm, pretty pretty okay for now and also make sure that these uh, list items are 0% in opacity in the first default state but in the hover state we'll, in we'll increase the opacity of these list items to a hundred percent that's awesome now if we go back to default state and we go to prototype mode as you can see adobe xd automatically sets the hover state auto animate as well as the next state that we want to take it to so i'll just say ease out 0 0.5 seconds and that's about it if i play this prototype and hover over this rectangle see how it smoothly just moves up like this and there's also a slight ripple effect covering the entire rectangle right here doesn't this look super cool moving on to the next design as you can see i have all the elements that i need here all i need to do is create a rectangle behind this drop down menu and make sure that this is about i don't know 200 pixels of border radius so that you have this rounded perfect rectangle I'll remove the border and I'll give this this reddish hue right here. By the way, don't get intimidated by everything here. I will be giving the Adobe XD file in the description so that you can download it and try it yourself. I will place this rectangle, rounded rectangle behind all this. Make sure it's centered as well. Perfect. And I will make sure that this drop down is now white in color so that we can easily view everything as well as this little chevron drop down icon perfect i will give this a slight shadow of about 24 by 24 i think that should be fine and give this the same color as this and give it about 25 percent of opacity and looks like a nice clean shadow now comes the super simple part i just uh, create a big rectangle here which just about covers this rectangle in the background and I remove the border and I shall give it a color which is similar to this red. However, if I go to the color palette, I will change the color palette from red to this uh, bright blue here. And that, that, this seems pretty nice and contrasting as well. And I'll make sure that I place it just above the rectangle but below the text here. I'll bring it to the top and I shall also increase the the border radius to the same border radius as the circle so to match that i'll make sure this is first of all behind it so that i can match and i think 80 should work no a little more 100 perfect now it perfectly fits this uh, rectangle in the background i'll bring it up so that it's somewhat like this and i'll make sure i align everything now what i'll do is double click on the rectangle so that i can display all these anchor points right here then next thing I'll do is add two more anchor points here, one here and one here and that's that's about fine. And what I'll do is I'll move these anchor points individually towards the top like this. And to give the wave effect, what I'll do is I'll double click on these anchor points once and once again to bring out a wave here. And I'll do the same thing for all of these, just bring them up a little bit and double click to make them a wave shape. Bring all of these like this, bring them, make them a wave by double clicking on the anchor points. I'll bring this one here like this. Perfect. This looks, this looks like a really clean two, three waves. That's fine. Now the next thing that we'll do is hold shift and move all of these, select all of these anchor points first and then move while holding one of these, just move them towards the top, just like this so that they come in line with this circular or rounded rectangle. I will adjust the remaining anchor points by deselecting and selecting again, just so that it covers this rounded rectangle in the background and it doesn't overflow like it's doing right now. And that is about it. The next thing I'll do is go to the blend mode drop down here. I'll click on the blend modes here and I'll say darken. Now darken is a little too dark, isn't it? What I'll do is I will remake it darken and I will make sure this is 50% in opacity. Maybe even less, 25%. Yeah, that seems much better. Now this gives like a little blood 
or little wavy kind of effect, which both are very contrasting, but that is how I can describe it. I will now place the list items right below this rectangle, first of all, and give them ample space so that they seem like a very neat list of items. Mm, that sh should be about it. Reduce the, I think the text size a little too big. I'll shift it to, I don't know, 48. Hmm, that's fine enough for right now. And one last thing we'll do is actually create a rectangle here on top of everything else and drag to select the list items as well as the rectangle on top. Hold Command Shift M to mask these items. Now the when the mask is set, what I'll do is double click on this group. And as you can see under the mask group, there's a rectangle right here. I'll bring this rectangle's top edge to the bottom edge of this top rectangle and align it evenly. Perfect. The next thing that I need to do is shift each of these list items towards the top a little bit. The first list item will actually be uh, slightly close to its original position. The second list item will be slightly further away. And this third list item will be the most, the furthest away actually. Perfect. I'll just drag everything here and say Command K or Control K to make this component. The next thing that we need to do is say plus here and say hover state so that you can create a hover state. Then the next step, while hover state is selected, I will go here. Uh, the first step is to rotate this triangle as per our tradition. And the second step is to actually bring this, bring these waves down towards the base right here. Not too low, just enough to fit in all the list items. And we'll just double click on each of these once again to make them flat like we had before. And I'll double click on each of them just like this and bring them down a little bit. Uh, this seems to be about right. And bring down any of these that we forgot. And that is about it, that is perfect. I'll select this again and I'll make sure that the opacity is 100% now so that we can display it perfectly. The last step that we need to do is go to this mask group three and bring down, bring down each of these list items one by one. So list item one, of course, list item two, of course, and list item three is the last list item. Perfect. And I'll make sure that they're also not too uh, close to the bottom right here. Perfect. Now, if we go to default state and we go to prototype, everything is already set for us. All we need to do is change the easing to ease in out and select 0.6 seconds as our timing or duration. And if I click on this artboard, I click on preview, I can hover over this and see how it's smoothly just, the wave just drops down smoothly, becomes this blue color and it also displays the list items and also displays these list items which come in slowly as compared to this wave itself. That gives it that extra, uh, extra smooth effect. I like this a lot. The last design is actually a material design drop down, which I've used the guidelines to create. So if you're working on a material design project, I think you should use this design to do it. So for first of all, we'll change the font from Gotham to Roboto, of course. That is the traditional uh, Google or material font. Um, and change it from bold to regular, of course. I'll bring in this uh, drop down icon a bit closer to this for this one. First step is to create a rectangle around this and make sure it's behind everything right here so that we can only see the, bor the borders of this rectangle here. And I'll change the border radius from zero to about 12. 12 should be fine, perfect. Maybe even more, maybe something like 16. I, I don't know, yeah, 16 seems much better. And I'll make sure that the border is actually three pixels um, and it is also slightly lighter. So I'll make sure that the color is not that dark. It's light as similar to this text here. One of the material design uh, drop downs has this label on top. So I'll just say uh, city, I don't know, city seems fine. And I'll make sure this is smaller, so 32. 
no 32 is too small 48 perfect and i'll put it in the center and create another rectangle around the city and necessarily doesn't have to be, look like anything remove the border and it should just be white so that it covers the borders of this line so that you you can see the difference and make sure the city is placed in the center right here looks pretty good i'll group these two together so the so that they don't come in our way i'll also make sure that the drop down is placed slightly towards the top of this artboard so that you know um, I can place the list items as well. Now the first thing that I have to do here is actually create the drop down portion which is another rectangle right below this rectangle. Make sure that the border radius is the same as the original rectangles which is 16 and there is no border for this one. There is however a shadow which I'm giving 4 by 8 so 4 pixel on the y axis and 8 on the blur and the shadow should be about 25% in opacity. So this is very close to what material design really indicates. And I also have a couple of list items, one which is, I don't know, New York, um, basically displaying the cities that there are. And maybe one can be, I don't know, Detroit. I'm not very good with my geography, so <laughs> New York, Detroit, I don't know. And that's it, I will select everything on screen and say Command K, Control K to make it a component and make sure that first of all this group of drop down is actually towards the drop down text itself and 0% in opacity. Next thing is I'll click on the plus icon here and say hover state, that's it. And while hover state is selected, I'll bring the drop down towards the bottom here with just below this rectangle, increases opacity to 100 rotate this triangle as per tradition towards the top and uh, reduce the opacity of this drop down to zero and bring it towards the bottom closer to this uh, drop down menu itself last thing that we'll do is change the border color from gray to maybe something maybe maybe something like purple maybe like this light purple here perfect if i go back to default state and i go to prototype Ease out is not fine, we'll have to select ease in out. And 0.3 seconds is all right. Everything else has been set by Adobe XD. And if I go to play, and I if I hover over this, see how this cleanly just animates into this drop down here based on material design guidelines, of course. So that was today's video. Hope you liked this video. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe to my channel to support it. And also click on that bell icon so that you get all the notifications of all my videos. Every Monday and Thursday, I post awesome new videos. I, I hope you have a great day ahead and God bless.